Folks, this is the Indestructible Quads Gobi 180. This is the copter that you saw me tearing up my property on yesterday, uh, if I do say so myself. And my, my extra jolt of confidence was given to me by the fact that, well, number one, this isn't my copter. I didn't, I didn't build it, and I have nothing to lose if I crash it. Ha ha ha. But uh, also, uh, because it's named Indestructible Quads, I kind of felt like I owed it to the manufacturer to try and prove that that name was correct. And I did crash this copter many times. I didn't put those crashes up on uh, on my video because I wanted you to see a good run, but um, it's been crashed many times. You can see the props. I left the props on here. I never changed the props on this. They are just beat to heck, nicked up, and um, it's it's going strong. Not, not a scratch on it, so to speak. No damage at all. Now I said I don't have anything to lose if I crash this copter, and that's actually true for a reason you might not have guessed, and that is that I, I'm not. I don't get to keep this copter. Uh, the the guy from Indestructible Quads said, "Hey, I'm going to send you a copter. You fly it. You tell me what you think of it." And um, you know, if you love it, I guess you should you keep it. But I'd really rather do a giveaway. And I, how could I say no to that? So we're going to be giving away this exact copter. You can win this copter exactly as you see it here right now. Nick's in the props and all. And I'm going to tell you how to enter that at the end of the video. But first, let's take a closer look at this copter and see what all is on it and why I think it's worth showing to you today. The first thing that stands out about this copter to me is that even though it's, uh, I mean, I guess it's a bind and fly if you have a Tyrannus, you just, it comes with the, the Free Sky receiver already in it, you bind it to your Tyrannus, you set up your, you know, your modes and everything, and you're good to go. And if you don't have a Tyrannus, you order it without a receiver, and I guess it's, then it's a plug and fly is what they call that. You put your own receiver on it, and you're good to go. And there are many ready-to-fly copters on the market, like the Vendetta, or the uh, the Vortex, and um, they're kind of these factory-made sort of custom pieces, right? This is just a racing quad. Like if I told you that I this just looks like something one of the guys at the local flight club would have brought. So I think that's a real advantage because, like, I think the the Vortex is a great copter for somebody who wants to start flying. I, I've, the guy at the local flight club had one. I was really impressed with how it flew. But here's the thing: if you have to work on the Vortex. You're learning how to work on a vortex. You're not learning how to work on just a generic copter. And so eventually you have to get into the world where you're building it yourself and you're going to build something like this. And in some sense, you're starting from scratch. Not entirely, but a little bit. I think one of the real advantages of a copter like this is if you are in a situation where you don't want to build your own or you don't have the time to build your own or for whatever reason you want to buy one that somebody else has built, you can get something like this. And when things break and you fix them, you're working on the exact same kind of copter that you will build someday when it's your time to build a copter. Even if you want to build a copter, I think there's a case to be made for buying something like this because a lot of people start out building, they build their first ZMR250 and there's so much wrong with it that it's it's so such a frustrating experience that just not being able to get into the air, the copter is crashing, the dropping out of the air, stuff isn't working right, and, and it just makes you want to pack it up, throw it in, and just go to another hobby. Buying something like this means that you will get something that is built correctly, tuned correctly, and you will start out with a perspective on what that's like. You can get right in the air, and then as things shoot, you could buy one of these and then you could start building your next copter and you could sort of just try and copy it and learn from what was done right here. This is really a template in a lot of ways for how you should build a copter. And if you've never built one, there's certainly an advantage to, to skipping all that frustration or at least, you know, putting it off and at least being able to fly while you're going through that frustration, maybe with another build. Now, this is the part of the video where I'd like to take you through and show you all the parts that are on the copter. But actually, there are a couple reasons why I'm not going to exactly do that. And one of the reasons is that this copter is not exactly like one you can buy. For example, the ones sold on the Indestructible Quads website come with a D4R2 receiver. And I specifically requested an X4R SB because once you fly with SBUS, you're not going to want to fly with PPM anymore. The, the other reason is that a new parts list has just gone up. He's gone to version two of this design. And so this is version one and it has different ESCs, it has different motors, etc. So you can go to the Indestructible Quads website and look at the copter to see what the new parts list is going to be. Many of the parts have been upgraded. Uh, they've gone to BL Heli S ESCs instead of regular BL Heli. 
stuff like that. Uh, better motors. Now, these are Emacs Red Bottom motors, so they're no slouch. But they're not the latest and greatest. They're solid, but there's, there's better stuff out there. So it really shows that Indestructible Quads is always working to upgrade and to, to make the product better. They're not just resting on their laurels, such as it were. I will say that one of my complaints, if I have a complaint, is the website still shows the D4R2 as the receiver. Really, the X4R SB, in my opinion, is a much better choice. So I would, I, if I had a request, it would be that this ship with the X4R SB. And if you have a Tyrannus and you feel reasonably handy, I would suggest buying this copter without the receiver and putting your own X4R SB in it. I would not suggest buying it with a D4R2 unless you, for some reason, like if you have a DJT module and you just can't use an X4R, then fine, but you get the D4R. But if you, can, if you can use an X4R SB, that's what you should be using. So like I said, you can go to the website and you can look at the parts list. They're all great parts. It's a good build. But let's take a look at the build quality here and show you some of the things that I think were done right and why I think this is a copter that's worth putting on the channel and showing to you. If you look right here at the power cord, you can see that there's two zip ties around it. And the idea there, that's a strain relief. The idea is that if your battery ejects in a crash, you don't want the power cord pulling on the pads on the PDB. If that happens enough times, you'll actually pull the pads right off the PDB and then you gotta replace it. So you put these zip ties on, and this is something that I do on all of my builds. It's a standard thing that I do. Uh, and then if it gets pulled or tugged, it tugs on the wire, not on the PDB. It's a lot easier to solder on a new XT60 than it is to replace your whole PDB. So that's a very nice touch, and I highly recommend it. By the way, it's also why you, you generally won't see me using one of those PDBs with the XT60 soldered directly to the PDB, because in that case, there's no strain relief at all, and if the battery ejects, it's pulling on that poor little PCB, which is not designed to take the kind of stresses that it's encountering. A capacitor has been added right here to the power lead. Uh, that's good, that's gonna help keep the video noise free and also help keep the ESC glitches from getting to the flight controller if there might be any. Uh, it's used hot glue here to reinforce this and that's a good step that definitely needs reinforcement, but the hot glue kind of looks pretty shitty. Um, so I suggest, I mean, what can you do, right? Maybe you could put a little bit of heat shrink over there and cover it up. I suggested that he consider using something like Suguru, which if you don't know what Suguru is, S-G-U-R-U, look it up, it's gonna blow your mind. But Suguru is kind of a, a moldable plastic that hardens it in contact in the air and uh, it would probably look a little bit more professional, a little bit nicer and accomplish the same thing. You can see that the Luminaire Lux has been placed on vibration isolation O-rings. Uh, I think there's some question as to how effective this really is, since vibration can still be transmitted through the screw, but again, it is a nice touch that shows that the builder is really trying to think of all the details and get everything right. The Foxier antenna here is a pretty solid choice. It's not going to hold up to something like a, maybe a TBS Triumph in terms of RF performance, but it's a, it's a solid choice with acceptable performance at a good price point, and I, they're pretty durable. I found them, I've been flying with these now for a couple weeks. I got, uh, I just swapped all my antennas out for them. I was using the Aomway antennas, and the problem with them is they don't have a cover like this, so the lobes break really easily in a crash. This one has a cover, and it's pretty durable. It's a pretty good antenna. This is exactly how I would do these antennas. This is exactly how I do them. Little zip ties sticking up, and the antenna sticking out. A lot of people put their whole antenna sticking way up, and that just gives it more room to get down into the props. This is a great way to do them. It's long enough that the antenna is free of the frame, but it's short enough that the antenna will stay out of the props. This is, this is a, a, exactly how I would do it. I really approve of that, that technique. The copter that was shipped to me has Emacs motors, and they've got two counterclockwise and two clockwise. And my opinion is that if you're using nylock nuts, and you should be using nylock nuts if at all possible, don't use those little spinners. If you're using nylock nuts, then it doesn't freaking matter, and they should just all be standard thread. And I passed that back to Indestructible Quads, and they said, yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I see your point. And that they'll be using standard threads all around going forward. The frame itself, you know, it's a Gobi 180. It's a really solid and durable frame. There's a lifetime warranty on the bottom plate. So if you somehow do manage to crack it, uh, Indestructible Quads will send you another one. So no problem there. Uh, I can't help when I see this frame to think of the Hibernogen Menel X 
that I did a review of some time ago. That thing was freaking, what was it, like $90, I think it was. And it didn't look that different from this, which is like, I think it's like a $40 frame if you were to buy the frame separately. Uh, so, I don't know. The Menel X is all, you know, it came in a really nice package with like cut out laser cut foam. And uh, and it was some kind of high quality Euro European carbon fiber. But heck, for 40 bucks or whatever, give me this frame with a lifetime warranty on the base plate. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take it. That'll be fine. So I think the frame is pretty good. There's not a lot to say about it. It's just your basic X frame and uh, it's got all the electronics stuffed into it. One other thing that I noticed about this build is that this coax here, this coaxial cable, which is coming from the video transmitter to the video antenna is kinked at a right angle. And the reason for that is that there's a right angle connector. This pigtail has a right angle connector on it. And since we want the antenna to come straight out the back, the, uh, the cable has to come out the side and then we don't want it sticking out too far so then it bends to go back in. If you have coax like this on your build, you should never kink it like that. And there's two reasons. One is that you'll physically deform the cable and it can affect the cable's ability to carry the RF signals. So you can actually reduce your range that way. The other is that, you know, with the, with the small coax like this, you've got actually got a pretty tight bend radius and you could get away with, with pretty tight bends. That's a, that's a pretty tight bend, but maybe you're getting away with it. The other problem is that there is a crimped brass ferrule here that is holding the connector on and if you bend sharp against it, eventually over vibration and time, it'll actually wear through the outside lining of the cable and damage it. So again, I passed that feedback back to Indestructible Quads and he went, oh yeah, of course. And he said he's not gonna use this type of uh, pigtail anymore. Going forward, there'll be straight pigtails and that won't happen. So overall, I think this is a really nice build. I'm very impressed with the build quality. Uh, it's it's a well-built copter. It had a few things that I nitpicked, but hey, you know, if you looked at one of my copters, you'd probably find a few things to nitpick too. Uh, so no real deal breakers and it flies really well. It flies really well. You saw the video yourself, it flies really nicely. At the price that's being asked, if you want a copter like this, if you want to get a, like a racing copter and you don't want to build it yourself, you know, I almost think a choice like this is better than something like a Vendetta or a Vortex because this is actually the exact kind of copter that you will build when you get to building and you will get to building eventually, you can't avoid it. So if you buy this, you'll, you'll be in the right ecosystem and as things break, you'll fix them one by one and you'll learn about all the different ways that the copter goes together. So check this copter out on Indestructible Quad's website. There's this one, which is the 184 inch. There's a 250 uh, version and there's, they got a bunch of copters. Go check them out, <laughs> okay? Not just this, but others. So then let me tell you what you're really waiting for and that's the giveaway. How do you register to win this exact copter? Well, what you do is you leave a comment down below. That's it, that's how you enter. You don't have to be a subscriber. I don't play that game. I'd love it if you would subscribe, and as they say on YouTube, I'd also love it if you'd come in and hit the like button and all that stuff, and then you know, that's the last you're going to hear of that. But to enter the giveaway, leave a comment down below. Don't leave more than one comment. Each comment is an entry. If you leave more than one comment, you'll get more than one entry, and that's not fair. So if you leave more than one comment, whether it's intentional or by accident, you will be disqualified from the contest. Please don't do that. I hate when somebody's name comes up and it, the YouTube... Uh, comment picker tells me that they have two comments and I have to disqualify them. That sucks. Uh, I, I will leave all the other official rules and legalese for the giveaway down in the video description. And uh, until then, happy flying.